a common feature during ancient Rome and yet an unusual notion for us in this present day. In this video, learn more about the Roman baths and their role in ancient Roman society. Stick around. Baths for bathing and relaxing were a common feature of Roman cities throughout the empire. The often huge bath complexes included a wide diversity of rooms offering different temperatures and facilities such as swimming pools and places to read, relax, and socialize. Roman baths, with their need for large open spaces, were also important drivers in the evolution of architecture offering the first dome structures in classical architecture, a mainstay of Roman culture. Public baths were a feature of ancient Greek towns, but were usually limited to a series of hip baths. Romans expanded the idea to incorporate a wide array of facilities and baths became common in even the smaller towns of the Roman world, where they were often located near the Forum. In addition to public baths, Wealthy citizens often had their own private baths constructed as part of the villa, and the baths were even constructed for the legions of the Roman army when on campaign. However, it was in large cities that these complexes took on monumental proportions with vast colonnades and wide-spanning arches and domes. Baths were built using millions of fireproof terracotta bricks, and finished buildings were usually sumptuous affairs with fine mosaic floors, marble covered walls, and decorative statues. Generally, opening around lunchtime and open until dusk, paths were accessible to all, both rich and poor. In the reign of Diocletian, for example, the entrance fee was a mere two denarii, the smallest denomination of bronze coinage. Sometimes on occasions such as public holidays, the baths were even free to enter. Typical elements of Roman baths. Typical features included changing rooms, exercise rooms, open air swimming pool, superheated dry and wet sweating rooms, hot room heated with a hot water pool and a separate basin on a stand, warm room indirectly heated with a tepid pool, pool room unheated and with a cold water basin often monumental in size and doomed. It was the heart of the baths complex. Rooms for massage and other health treatments. Additional facilities could include cold water plunge baths, private baths, toilets, libraries, lecture halls, fountains, and outdoor gardens. Eating systems. The first baths seem to have lacked a high degree of planning and were often unsightly assemblages of diverse structures. However, by the first century CE, the baths became beautiful, symmetrical, and harmonious structures, often set in gardens and parks. Early baths were heated using braziers, but from the first century BCE, more sophisticated heating systems were often used, such as underfloor heating fueled by wood-burning furnaces, this was not a new idea as Greek baths also employed such a system, but as typical of the Romans, they took an idea and improved upon it for maximum efficiency. The huge fires from the furnaces sent warm air under the raised floor, which stood on narrow pillars of solid stone. Or polygonal or circular bricks, the floors were paved over with 60 centimeter square tiles which were then covered in decorative mosaics. Walls could also provide heating with the insertion of hollow rectangular tubes, which carried the hot air provided by the furnaces. In addition, special bricks had bosses at the corners of one side which trapped hot air and increased insulation against heat loss. The use of glass for windows from the first century CE also permitted a better regulation of temperatures and allowed the sun to add its own heat to the room. The vast amount of water needed for the larger baths was supplied by purpose-built aqueducts and regulated by huge reservoirs in the baths complex. 
The reservoir of the Baths of Diocletian in Rome, for example, could hold 20,000 gallons of water. Water was heated in large lead boilers fitted over the furnaces. The water could be added via lead pipes to the heated pools by using a bronze half cylinder connected to the boilers. Once released into the pool, the hot water circulated by convection. Outstanding examples, some of the most famous and splendid baths, including those at Lepkes Magna, completed in 127 CE, with their well-preserved domes, the Bath of Diocletian in Rome, completed in 305 CE, the large bath complexes of Timgad at Ephesus in Bath, 2nd century CE, in the Antonine Baths at Carthage, 162 CE. The Baths of Caracalla in the southern area of Rome are perhaps the best preserved of all Roman baths and were second only in size to Trajan's Baths of Rome, 110 CE. They were almost the most sumptuous and luxurious Roman baths ever built. Completed in 235 CE, huge walls and arches still stand and attest to the imposing dimensions of the complex, which used some 6.9 million bricks and had 252 inferior columns, reaching a height of up to 30 meters and covering an area of 337 by 328 meters. They incorporate all the classical elements one would expect, including a one meter deep Olympic-sized pool and an unusual circular caledarium which reached the same height as Rome's Pantheon and spanned 36 meters. The Caledarium also had large glass windows to take advantage of the sun's heat and further facilities including two libraries, a water mill, and even a waterfall. The complex had four entrances and could have accommodated as many as 8,000 daily visitors. 6,300 meters of marble and granite lined the walls the ceiling was decorated with glass mosaic which reflected light from the pools in an iridescent effect. There were a pair of six meter long fountains and the second floor provided a promenade terrace. Water was supplied by aqueducts and local springs and stored in 18 cisterns. The baths were heated by 50 furnaces which burned 10 tons of wood a day. Besides the imposing ruined walls, the site had many rooms which still contain the original marble mosaic flooring and large fragments also survive from the upper floors, depicting fish scales and scenes of mythical sea creatures. Influence on architecture Baths and the need to create large airy rooms with lofty ceilings brought the development of the architectural dome. The earliest surviving dome in Roman architecture is from the Frigidarium of the Stabian Baths at Pompeii, which dates to the 2nd century BCE. The development of concrete in the form of stiff motored rubble allowed unsupported walls to be built ever wider apart, as did hollow brick barrel vaults supported by buttress arches and the use of iron tie bars. These features would become widely used in other public buildings and especially in large constructions. Even in modern times, Roman baths have continued to influence designers. For example, both the Chicago Railroad Station and the Pennsylvania Station in New York have perfectly copied the architecture of the great Frigidarium of the Baths of Caracalla. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.